Now we're going to paint our lime. Write your first and last name and your hour. Do that now, please. And your hour right there. It doesn't look like it left you a whole lot of space. Just make sure it's clear over there. And a lemon is, of course, yellow. If you're doing this as a lime, then you're going to use green, mostly green, and maybe lighten up your green with the yellow. So you've got a yellow green. And make, if you need a large amount, then make it in this container here. I'm going to do this one as a, a lemon. I'm going to do a lemon. But if you have a lime, you're going to do this with green. So I'm going to get to my paint. And I'm going to get my complementary color, which is violet. Violet and yellow are the most surprising colors for me to put together. Because if you're not really careful, it can get really, really muddy really fast. So you have to be careful with this. But I think it's pretty amazing that you can mix these two colors to get, get such a, a nice effect. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and paint my my entire piece with the yellow, especially since yellow is such a high key value. Paint the entire thing, pulling my brush. I can see that I've got a little bit of red in my brush. I did not rinse out my brush well enough. Oh, and look, I just went outside the lines. Bummer. If you go outside the lines on your, on your final piece, you're just going to go over the edge with your background color to fix that. Now I have a nice base coat on there. And now I'm going to start very slowly, very, very slowly, start mixing in a little bit of purple to get my darker value. Pull that across. Make sure that you keep your curve lines. Yep. And then I'm going to start blending that together now to try to lighten up my yellow from this darker mustard color and bring it in. Now the lemon and the lime both have sort of a rough texture. So when you're all done blending, then go back in and do some, this is called stippling. and get that texture of the lemon. Now you use your brush straight up and down and just tap it up and straight up and down. Okay. Now, the yellow is so light that I do feel like I need to put in just a little bit of light yellow in the center there, in this space right in here, and then a little bit up there too. So I'm going to rinse out my brush because this yellow it's going to get contaminated so easily and I really am need to rinse out my water altogether because that is creating a little bit of red in there so I'm going to rinse that out and wash that off so I need a higher key value in here I'm going to add just a little bit of white to my yellow try to get a higher key value in there I think that's more like it because I want to create the illusion that it's round that it's not just a flat shape that it's a three-dimensional form. And then I think I need maybe a little bit more white for my highlighted area. I'm not even going to put any more yellow in it than that's already in my brush and see what that does for me. That's a little too yellow or a little too white. It's a little bit more. Now these are acrylics, they dry. You can paint over them if you make a mistake. Really, that's why I have these is so that if you make a mistake you can fix it. Now another type of paint that you might enjoy using is um, oil based paint. I do not use oil based paint because the, the turpentine that you have to clean with it really affects my, my allergies and my sinuses. I don't do well. It kind of makes me a little nauseous. But the awesome thing about oil paints is that they don't dry up. You can make changes and changes and changes and they don't dry up. But you can't paint over them very easily until, until they're all dry. So I like the acrylic because as soon as it's dry, I can make changes. Okay, and I'm going to put a little highlight over here. Still not going to make it like absolutely white, but I want it to just be a little bit lighter over there. 
Still using that stippling, 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 stippling. Oops. With oil paints, if you don't like something, you take a fettling or you take a knife, a palette knife, and you just scrape it right off. Okay, now I can still see the guidelines underneath, so I would really need to go over that one more time to make sure I don't see my guidelines, and then to add my little highlights, depending on how big I want those. I could use the end of my paintbrush or the end of a pencil if I want them really small. And you have a lemon. <laughs>